we have Asar Beteves, the fast of Asar Beteves coming up very quickly at the beginning of next week. And since we've been studying Hegyone Allah, I thought we would look at his essay which gives us an overview of some of the various issues and halachic ramifications with regard to Tainus in general, but specifically with regard to Tainus Asar Batevis. We have four tzomos, four fast days, that are written in what we call Divrei Kabbalah. Divrei Kabbalah means in Nach, and they're all written in Zechariah Hanavi. And Zechariah speaks about four months. And this is in the eighth chapter of Zechariah. Now, if we start counting the months of the year from Nisan, Nisan Iyar Sivan Tammuz. So the Tzom Haravi is Tammuz, Hamishi is Av. Then we skip El and we go to Tishrei, that's Tzom Hashvi, the seventh month, and that's Tzom Gedalia, and then it has Tzom HaSiri, which is on Tevis. Tevis is the 10th month of the year when you count from Nisan. And Zechariah Novi foretells in his prophecy that ultimately these days of fasting will be days of Sason Vesimcha. Now the reason for the fast on Asar Tevis is already indicated in Nach, in Malachim, Malachim Beis, Perak Hafei, Bishana Hachis, Lemalchus Tzidkiyo, Bechodesh HaSiri, which is Teves, Be'asar LaChodesh, on the 10th of that month, Ba Nebuchadnezzar, Melech Bavel, Hu V'chol Chelo Al Yerushalayim. So this is the first major attack against Yerushalayim, a siege on Yerushalayim. And that's the beginning of the process that led up ultimately to the Churban of Ice. So if you want to ask, when did the Churban of Ice begin? It began on the 10th of Teves. Now, the 10th of Teves is mentioned elsewhere in Tanakh. And that's in Yechezkel and Novi. Now, Yechezkel was not in Eretz Yisrael, and if we couldn't have possibly witnessed the siege of Yerushalayim and Asar Betevis, and yet God reveals to Yechezkel what's going on at that moment of Asar Betevis in Yerushalayim. So it's, a, it's an amazing nevuah, very unusual. Usually a prophecy foretells what's going to happen down the line. But here in this case, Yechezkel gets a gili nevuah of what's going on elsewhere in the world at that moment. And the Pesach says, and this is the 24th chapter of Yechezkel, that Yechezkel is in Bavel, that's called the Golos of Yechonia, and on that day, God reveals to Yechezkel what's going on with the siege in Yerushalayim and commands Yechezkel to write that down in the Divrei Nevuah of Sefer Yechezkel. Vayehi Tvar Hashem Eli, Yechezkel records this Nevuah. I got the word of God. Bishon HaTshiz, Bechodesh HaSiri, Vesor LaChodesh. It's exactly like the Pesach, that we saw in Malachi, we're talking about the ninth year of Malchus Sikio. We're talking about the tenth month, which is Tevez, and the tenth of the month. Ben Adam, Ksov Lecha Es Shem Hayom, Es Etzem Hayom Azeh, Somach Melech Bavel which is the Bukhanetzer, of course, Al Yerushalayim, the Etzem Hayom Now the words, the Etzem Hayom which appeared not once, but twice in Yechezkel, in the context of Asar Vatevis, will be picked up a little bit later. In Mirza Hashem, in a few minutes' time, we're going to speak about the famous 
break through the revolution of the Avudraham, who lived about six centuries ago. And he builds his case on these three words, the Etam HaYom HaZeh. Yom HaSiri Tzuva Ben Buzi HaChozeh Tzov Lecha B'Sefer HaMachazeh L'Zikaron Li'am Nomeis B'Nevzeh Es Etam HaYom HaZeh. Those who recite Tzlichos on Asar B'Teves might recall that one of the Tzlichos is dedicated to tell us what happened on this day. And it's interesting that the Python, the liturgical poem, emphasizes those words as etem hayom hazeh. Now, if we look in the commentaries on Yechezkel, whether it be the Radak or the Mitzvah's David, and if you follow me inside one on the top of page 91, they explain that why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu command Yechezkel to write exactly when he received this prophecy? And they all explain in the same vein that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted this to be something that would sink in to the very psyche of Klal Yisrael. That Yechezkel is sitting in Babel, far away from Eretz Yisrael, and he's prophesizing exactly at that time, synchronizing what's going on in Yerushalayim. That's a tremendous revelation of the power and the truth of Nevoah prophecy. You know, the prophecy and the belief in prophecy is one of the 13 principles of the faith. One of the Shlosh Yisrael Yisolei Ha'amuna, the tenets of our faith. Look at this. Yechezkel, they didn't have, you know, the technology that we have where you could see something on the other side of the world that's going on right now through all sorts of means of communication and technological advance, but Yechezkel is describing at the time of the siege on Yerushalayim exactly what's going on because he gets a bit of room. And therefore, Yaminu Lidivre Hanovi, we should believe in the words of the Navi. And that was very important because there were the VA checker. We know one of them by name, his name was Hanani ben Azar, and he prophesied that the Churban Abayis would never take place. No way, no how would, would God allow the destruction of the temple. He, he was a false prophet. And there were other false prophets. But when we hear the prophecy of Yechezkel, that's going to give us the Amunah, the belief in the VAMS. And unfortunately, very often when we believe as we have to in the VAMS, they are foretelling catastrophe and destruction. Now those prophecies could be changed, could be altered. If we do tshuva, we could actually prevent the fulfillment of a bad prophecy. And therefore, it's critical that we link up to the prophecy of a Navi Emes who is coming to warn us and rebuke us so that we'll do tshuva. Now again, we started with Sefer Zechariah Navi in the eighth chapter of Zechariah. We said that the Navi lists four fast days, which will ultimately be days of Sosam Basim. But none of these fast days are explicitly mentioned in Zechariah in terms of the date of the fast. It only says the month of the fast. We have Tom Ha Revi, Tom Hachabishi, Tom Hashvi, Tom Hasiri, but we don't have any dates. What date in the month are we meant to fast? Says the Minchas Chinuch in Mitzvah Shin Aleph 301 that the Navi was deliberately so same below Pirish. He did not tell us what day of the month. Why? Says the Minchas Chinuch 
almost like a brisker tzvei dinin. He was before Reb Chaim. That these fast days have two dimensions to them. You know, we always classify a mitzvah as either Doraisa or Durabanan. We have seven mitzvahs to Rabbanan. We just finished one of them, a big fish, and that was Hanukkah. But there's something in between a Doraisa and a Durabanan, right down the middle. And that's called Midivrei Kabbalah. And again, on, uh, just on the side, I mean, this is, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but Megillus Esther is a classical example of a mitzvah derabbanan, which is midivrei kabbalah, because all the mitzvahs of Purim are written and recorded in the Megillah, which is part of Tanakh, and if it's midivrei kabbalah. Based on that, the Turi Evan says his famous Chiddush, that if you have a city like Tiberia, and it's a suffix with this mukachoma, Mimos Yoshua was not Mukaf Toma, where they should celebrate and read the Megillah on the 14th or the 15th of Adar. You have to read it on both days because it's Midivrei Kabbalah. We don't apply something to our Bodhul The Tzomos, the four Tzomos, are Midivrei Kabbalah. Are they not? They're in Zechariah Novi. Ah. The months are midivrei kabbal. Says them in Chaschina, but the specific day, that's a takonis chachomim. That's already a dravana. We can fulfill the mitzvah of midivrei kabbal of Zechariah Novi on a number of different alternative days, as long as it's within that month. And in Chaschina, to prove his point, he quotes a very fascinating Gemara in Rosh Hashanah on Daf Yud Chesom in Amid Beis. And the Gemara records a machlokas about Soma Siri, which is our fast, that's Teves, between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon. When should we fast? Rabbi Akiva says on the 10th of Teves. Rabbi Shimon says on the 5th of Teves. And each one gives an example and an explanation for his shita. But what's going on? How could there be a Machlokas Tanoim about a, a Titus which is written up in the Nevi'im? Back at the time of the Nevi'im, says the Ben Chaschino, the Nevi'im only established a month. The month of Teves generates a Chiv Titus. Which day of the month of Teves? That's up to the Chacham. They will have various considerations, Shikla Das, and there are Different options. In the case of Asar Bateves, we have an option of Rabbi Shimon, the fifth of tables. And it's very interesting that Rabbi Shimon gives an explanation, fascinating explanation as to why the fifth of Teves should be the day of fasting. And once again, if you're following me, it's on page 92. Says Rabbi Shimon, there's something called a shmua. A shmua means that we heard <laughs> the news about what's going on in the city of Jerusalem somewhere on the face of the globe. The shmua about what was going on in Yushalayim in the month of Teves. And if Uchadnezzar was gathering together his troops in order to create a siege and plunge forward towards Yushalayim and strangle the city, that Shmua reaches the Gola, the Jews in Bavel, for example, on the 5th of Tevez, already five days before the actual siege, the people heard five days earlier in the Gola, what was about to transpire in Yerushalayim. How does he know this? It's pretty much explicit in Apostle again in Yechezkel, this time in chapter 1 in Gimel. Vayehi v'shtei esrei shana basiri. Okay, so it's the 12th year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign in the 10th month, which is Teves, 
on the fifth day of the month of Teves, already the Shmua reaches Bavel, they're already moving in, zooming in on the city of Yushalayim. Says Rabbi Shimon, Asu Yom Asreifa, I'm sorry, Asu Yom Ashmua Ki Yom Asreifa. When you already hear the Shmua about what's going to happen and all of the pieces of the puzzle and the soldiers and the pawns on the chessboard are already set into place to move forward, that's called the Yom Ashmua. And Yom Ashmua is worse than the Yom Hasreifa. And this halacha in the Sechta Moed Katan on the Avchaf with regard to Avelus. That the Yom Ashmua is like the Yom Misa. Again, you have to see the sugya and all the repercussions of that, but we have a concept called Yom Ashmua. It's the Minchas I don't get it. The fast of Teves is written in Navi in Zechariah. It's the Divrei Kabbalah. How could Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Akiva, Tanoim, who came long after the Navi, have a machlokas about the, the fast of Teves? But the answer is because the Divrei Kabbalah, there was no halacha to fast on the 10th of Teves. There was a Divrei Kabbalah to obligate us to fast in the month, the 10th month, which is the month of Teves. But on which day? That was not included in the Divrei Kabbalah. And the choice of the day, where it would fall, where the hatchet would fall, would be left to the Chachamim to use their logic and decide which day in Teves would be the day of fasting. Rabbi Akiva says it would be Asar of Teves, and Rabbi Shimon says the fifth of Teves. We find a similar issue with regard to Tishba. Now, we always assume that we fast on the ninth of Av, but not everybody agreed to that. The Gemara tells us in the Sefta Tainis, on Daf Chavtes, towards the end of the Sefta, in the name of Yochanan, that if not for the fact that the Chachamim would, would disagree with me, I would have established that the fast of Tisha B'av should be commemorated on the tenth of Av, because that's when the Iker straight for the Beis Hamikdash took place. And they, they, lit, they lit the base of the flames on the ninth of Av, but the burning, the road straight from the Mikdash took place on the tenth of Av. How could it be that Rabbi Yochanan would raise a question with regard to a fast day that is encoded in the Navi in Zechariah? But the answer is that as far as Kabbalah, as far as Nebuah is concerned, it says Av. On which day of Av that is me divrei chacham. That's not me divrei kabbalah. There was never a kabbalah on which day to fast, and hence we find various debates, not only with regard to teves, but also with regard to av as to which day should be the fast day. Okay. And now, so we get to the main topic of today's discussion. When we structure the fast days from what we call Menachamur el Hakal, meaning we create a pyramid, the most Hamur on top of the pyramid of all fast days is no doubt what my Shver used to call Yom HaKadosh, meaning Yom HaKippur. Right below Yom HaKippurim comes Tisha Now watch what goes on over here. Yom HaKippurim is Doraisa, and the fasting generates a chiv kares if someone eats, etc. Below that, we have a fast called Tisha B'av, which is, as we said before, Midivrei Kabbalah. And it's almost a spitting image of Yom HaKippur. It has all the chumras of a full-fledged, full-blast Yom time. That means we start at night, and we have all five Inuyim, all of the afflictions. So Tisha B'av, therefore, is one notch below Yom HaKippur. Then we move down to the third level. 
And that's the other Gimel Tainios, the other three fast days. Shivas Vitamas, Sarbateves, Som Gidali. And here, not only are we down a level from Yom HaKippurim to Dibre Kabo, which we already accomplished in, in Tishma, but not only that, the fast day begins with daybreak. And there are no new year. The Gemara says, because it's his man, shall show him. In other words, it's not, uh, you know, the enemies are not attacking us, and we were Makabal, a tinus in those limited ways, meaning it's only during the day, and it doesn't include the fast, the uh, Inui. But here's a fascinating question. Is it possible, and this is such a relevant question as we study and approach the Asar B'teves, that within the other three tinios that are on the lower echelon of the pyramid, there is a substructure. It means that there is a pyramid within a pyramid. And in this case, Asar B'teves is more chamur than Shavas B'tavus, and so we get down. How could that be? And the one who broke new ground on this topic was none other than the Avudraha, about six, maybe six and a half centuries ago. And in, he has what's called Seder Tfilos Hatainios. Because the Avudraha is all about Tfilo. You know, Nusach and Laws of Tfila. And the, the one who made this Abu Dram famous, this piece in the Abu Dram, I don't mean the Abu Dram himself, was none other than Beis Yosef. But you know what? If I want to be more meticulous, I would say the one who made it notorious, not famous. Because the Beis Yosef has a real major problem and an attack on this Kiddush of the Abu Dram. And according to Beis Yosef, it's, it's not possible to tolerate that any fast of the three fasts is superior and more common to the other, and that Asar B'tevis is more common. In any event, the Abu Dram says the following. In Yom Kippur, the Torah says, Nefesh HaShel Osu'una B'etzem Hayom Hazeh. Underline those three words. The Etzim Bayom Hazem means on the 10th of Tishrei. And that's exactly when we commemorate the fast and we implement the fast of Yom HaKippur. And it makes no difference what day of the week it is. Even if it's on Shabbos, we will fast on Shabbos. That's the power of Yom HaKippur. But from whence do we derive these conclusions? From those three words, be Etzim Hayom Hazem. Says the Abu those identical three words appear in Divrei Kabbalah, not in Zechariah Novi, but in Yechezkel Novi, as we saw above. And Yechezkel Novi is told that right now, God says, as we speak, there's a siege around Yerushalayim that's being implemented by the Vuchad Netzer and his armies. And I want you to record this in the Divrei Nevoah, then on the on the in the tenth month, the etzem ayom hazeh, Nebuchadnezzar attacks Yerushalayim. Says the Avodah, why the emphasis when God asks Yechezkel to record this nevuah on the etzem ayom hazeh? What my kamashma? What? Why is it so important for Yechezkel to write? Be etzem ayom hazeh. We don't find it with regard to Shavas Betamu. Certainly not with regard to Tzom Gedalia. We don't even find it with regard to Tishba, and certainly not Shavas Betamu. Only with regard to Asar Betames and Yom Kippur. If the Navi utilizes these three words, the etzem ayom hazeh, borrowing, so to speak, or cloning those three words. From the top of the totem pole, the most chamer of all fast days, namely Yom Kippurim, obviously the Navi is telling us that this fast day should be upgraded 
to a more chomer status, almost equivalent to that of Yom Kippur. My nafkimina says the Abba John, this is the famous breakthrough, and you all know it, but it always pays to review it year after year, that if Asar Vitebes coincides with Shabbos, we will fast on Shabbos, because the Navi writes, the Etzem Hayomaz. Now we should keep in mind that this Chiddush of the Abu Draham, even if we were to accept it, is purely theoretical. It's lumbus, it's, it's conceptual. It tells me something about the nature of our servitation. It's not practical at all. Because the way the calendar is organized, after Hill Hashani organized the calendar, Rosh Chodesh Teves, could never fall on a Thursday. And that's codified, by the way, in the Shulchan Aruch himself, in our Chaim Simen Tov Chav Ches. Now, in order for the Sarah Teves to fall out on Shabbos, you would have to have Rosh Chodesh Teves on a Thursday. And there ain't no such thing. However, with all due respect to Kiddush al but there was once upon a time Kiddush al And Kiddush al means whenever the Molad was seen and the Adam came and testified in front of the Bezna Godel, that's when they established the day of Rosh Chodesh. And it's quite possible, therefore, during the period of time of Kiddush al that Rosh Chodesh Tevis would fall on a Thursday and therefore Asar Tevis would be on Chavez. And now the Kiddush of the Abadram, not in a practical sense today, but in a very practical sense back then, would be relevant that we would fast on a Sarvatevis on Shabbos. Why? How do we derive this conclusion? Because it says, be et So today it may be purely theoretical, but in the world of halacha, it's not theoretical at all. Whereas every other fast day that falls on a Shabbos, including Tisha B'Av itself, will be postponed till Sunday. Actually, the Gemara vacillates whether we should be mocked a bit or we should be ma'achar. We'll talk about that in Shem later. But tachlis, we're going to postpone the fast until Sunday. Not so in the case of Asar Again, it can't fall out on Asar Bateves, on Shabbos. But Back in the day of Kiddush al it could, and maybe in the future, it will. Now, before we get to the objection of the Beis Yosef and why he adamantly rejects this Kiddush of the Abu Jahan, and again, the Beis Yosef was not long after the Abu Jahan, probably a century later, we want to take a look here on the bottom of page 93 of an insider of Chaim Brisker. Again, this is all Rab Chaim B'Pi Ashmur. We don't know if Rab Chaim exactly said this or exactly what he said. You know, last night I gave a shear about Rab Salvechik, so I spoke about the Mesora. You know, the Mesora, the Brisker world, it's got to be very meticulous. Anyway, this is the, the so-called Mesora from Rab Chaim. Rav Chaim says the following. When we have a clash between a fast, a chiv tainis, and Shabbos, is there an absolute rule, as we probably would say yes if Rav Chaim would ask us as students in his class, is there an absolute rule that Shabbos trumps tainis? And the answer is no. And as you know, I don't have to tell you, tainis kalom, a fast because I had a terrible dream, never overrides the Shabbos. And we will fast a Tainus Chalom on Shabbos. Tainus Chalom doesn't lend itself to the Chiyah. We don't push off the Tainus Chalom. It's urgent. On that very day that he had the dream, he fasts, even if it's Shabbos. So we see that in theory, Shabbos might kowtow to a Tainus. The Gemara tells us that we have to fast another fast to make up for the fast on Shabbos, meaning because we weren't Makai the Miss of Shabbos, 
and therefore we have to fast about that. So, you know, he'll get to eat on Motsi Shabbos, he'll make a big, big Malava Malka, and then he'll fast again on Sunday. It's, it's not a great deal. You know, the, I've, I've gotten into better deals than that, but the bottom line is that's how he can negate the power and the impact of a tiny skull. And he says the following. Now, there's one line here which I don't understand. If somebody could please enlighten me, I'd be very appreciative. On the bottom of page 93, I don't know, it's gibberish to me, only because I don't understand. It's not gibberish, but I, I don't catch it. He says that... So he writes, But what do those words mean? I I I push it, I tried to rack my brains, I couldn't figure it out. That is, you can do a, a fast of Tashlum in the, uh, the next day or another day. Uh, I don't, I don't get another, it. If, I mean, on if, Shabbos, if you fast the tiny Shalom on Shabbos, then you'll have to make up a fast on Sunday. No, no, the other tiny is like like a sorbetevis or like uh, like tzam gedalia. If it comes out on Shabbos, you you die, you're die, you, you you do a tashlumen by fasting another day. I guess maybe he means because it's not urgent to fast immediately. You know, you can push it off to another day. Uh, it, it's not because again, you can't use sorbetevis because we're kind of trying to explain the Abu Draham that right, okay, fine. He says, now Rabbi Chaim explains, what's the difference between Asar B'tavis that override Shabbos and other Tainios? He says the following, all of the Tainios are Midivrei Kabbalah, based on Zechariah Novi, but the Avodram says, and this we saw already in the Mechaschina, but now we're going back five centuries, is only on the month. There's no specific day in the month, Midivrei Kabbalah. That's what we get from Zechariah Novi. If that be the case, then who says you have to fast on that day? Right, let's say Shivas of the Tammuz, Tichabov, etc. Why not postpone it till the 18th of Tammuz or the 10th of Av? And you'll have your cake and eat it too. You'll eat your cake on Shabbos and you'll have the fast day on Sunday. Everything is great. So we don't have that urgency of a tiny shalom. With regard to Toma Siri, we have two dinim of Divrei Kabbalah. We have the Divrei Kabbalah from Malachim. I'm sorry, let's start again. We have the Divri Kabbalah from Zechariah, and we have the Divri Kabbalah from Yechezka. The Divri Kabbalah from Zechariah obligates me to fast one day in, ta- in, ta- in Tevez. In the 10th month, I can postpone it till, till the 11th of Tevez. But we have another Divri Kabbalah, and that's Yechezka Anovi. And according to the Abu Drahab, when Yechezka Anovi says, Be etzim he's telling you, that the fast is on the 10th of Teves, the day in which the enemies attacked Yerushalayim. So now we have a different Kabbalah on the 10th day of Teves. That day has been specifically singled out because of the tragedy, the catastrophe of that day as a day of Tainus. And it's urgent. It's like a Tainus Kalom. It doesn't lend itself to being and pushed off to the next day because it says we need to fast 
that gives it the same status as the Tainus Chalom, which is also by Yom Azeb, because it's urgent that I fast on the day of the time of the Chalom. And the beautiful thing is that the Hegyoni Allah in footnote number 23 finds this Chiddush that's attributed to Reb Chaim in the Vilna of Bezdin, Reb Shloim HaKoyim, in Binyan Shlomo. And he actually quotes in verbatim. It's beautiful. It's on the bottom of 93, going on to 94. Footnote number 23. Why is it that here God is warning Yechezkel, he's mandating that Yechezkel write the shame of the Yom? So was Ein Kteda. It doesn't matter if you forget which day and you don't fast until the next day. And the proof of the pudding is that if it were Shabbos, you would push it off to the next day. So there's no heavy kpeda that he has to fast on that day. And that's the Abu Drahan. So if Asar Bateves falls out on a Shabbos, you would have to fast on Shabbos because the Torah says it's Etzem Ayom Azeh. That's exactly what Rav Chaim was saying. That with the, within the context of the Dibre Kabbalah, in all the other Tainios, the month was generated as a chiv. But with regard to Asar Davis, it's not just the month, but it's the day itself. That's the Yetzim Ayom Azeh. Therefore, it's urgent. Now we can plug in Reb Chaim in his analogy to Tainus Kalom. The problem is, Rabosai, the statement. It doesn't say this in, in the Pasuk in Yechezkel. The Pasuk in Yechezkel does not mention anything about fasting. It only mentions that Yechezkel is obliged by the Nevoa to write down the exact details of what was going on in Yerushalayim, even though Yechezkel was in Babel. And the details include not just the month, but the day of the month. Does that mean that you have to fast on that day of the month? The Yom Azeh is only a sipur, a gili maisa, to reveal to Yechezkel that when he records the maisa that happened, and again, he's standing at a distance, he should record not just the month, but the day of the month. So when the Torah says, for example, in Yom HaKippur, B'etzim HaYom HaZeh, the Torah says, Kol Nefesh HaShelo Se'une, B'etzim HaYom HaZeh. The Torah is talking specifically about the fast. But in the case of Yechezkel, regarding Asar B'teves, it says, B'etzim HaYom HaZeh, for the Sipur's man HaMa'oron, to tell you the time that this took place. That the Mitzar in Yushalayim was on that day. Samach Melech Babel HaYushalayim, B'etzim HaYom HaZeh. Doesn't say a word about the fast. I mean, the fairies bats my illness appears over and over again throughout that night. For example, when did Noah go into the table? It says Bietzamayomaze. When did Avram do the Milo? Bietzamayomaze. And there are many other examples. So Yechesku was told, without any mention of the Titus, that the Mitzar of Yushalayim at the hands of the Bukhanetza was Bietzamayomaze. It was on the 10th of. Uh, of Tevez. That, that, that's not connected at all to the Yom HaTayis. And perhaps that's why the Beis Yosef rejects the Chiddush of the Abu Jahab, and he writes Lo Yadati Minayin Lo Zeh. What do you mean Minayin Lo Zeh? And the Abu Jahab quotes the Pesach in Yechezkel What do you mean the Beis Yosef rejects Minayin Lo Zeh? However, if we're going to reject the Abu Jahab, forget about the Beis Yosef. 
Kvodo, you know, Vimkoma Muna. Okay, Minayim. We know the answer to Minayim. But it's against Rash. The Avadram is against a Mufurisha Rash. Of course, I would test you and ask you, where is the Rash? I wouldn't know. Maybe you would know. It's the Rashi of a Seth and Megillah. On Daf. Hey, Omenal. The Mishnah in the Seth and Megillah enumerates a list of those things that if it's Chal on Shabbos, sometimes we're Makdim and sometimes we're Ma'ach. And on the list, the Mishnah mentions Tichabo as an example if there is a collision, an overlap between Shabbos and Tichabo, Madchim, we push off the fast until Sunday. So, Mishnah Although the Mishnah explicitly only mentions Tichabo falling on Shabbos, it says Rashi, don't make a mistake. Elahu adin l'shar tainios, l'shevaser betavus, u'lasar beteves. Rashi says black and white that asar beteves on Shabbos is pushed off to a Sunday. And and the sikumoshal davar. The bottom line is we have now machlokes between Rashi and the Avu which is like unheard of. I mean, the Avodram is on that, you know, borderline between a Rishon and an Achron. All right, we'll push him in for the Rishon. So you're talking about the end of the 15th, the beginning of the 16th century. Okay, we'll call him a Rishon. But it's against Rash. It's unbelievable. The Achron don't understand why the Beis Yosef didn't quote Rash in Megillah when he objected to the Avodram. He should have quoted the, you know, you can't say about the base Yosef, you didn't know Rashi in the set of you. That does can it sign. All right. In any event, but their Simcha Mitvinsk wants to substantiate the Shita of the Avadra. Again, it's a dissenting view against Rashi, but uh, there's a basis for the conclusion of the Avadra. Fascinating. He says the following. Why is it that we don't fast on Shabbos? The Easter of Tainus on Shabbos. Two Shittas. The Rashba says that the reason why we don't fast on Shabbos is because the Easter of fasting on Shabbos is an Easter do rice. And the proof is from the Rama. Very strange to find this Rama. It's, it's the Rama that's tucked away, and we would never know about it. The Rama is in the first parak of Hilfus Shvuas. And there the Rama talks about what's called the Shvuas Shav. If you take a Shvuah against the law of the Torah, the Shvuah is called the Shvuas Shav. And Nishba Anos, a man took a Shvuah to fast, Bishab Basos, Okay. That halacha of nishpa levatel is a mitzvah to doraisa halacha, and it only applies to a mitzvah doraisa. Apparently, the Ramam held that if he takes a shvua to fast on Shabbos, he is in violation of a doraisa. And hence, the shvua is a shvua shah. Says the Rab Shulchanara, or you can call me Alter Rebbe, that's what they called him two weeks ago when I was there. He says, there's a source in the Torah for the Eastern Tainus on Shabbos. Where? Where does it say in the Torah that you're not allowed to fast on Shabbos? Says the Rab Shulchanara, the Torah says in the parish of Man, Ichlu Hayo, Ki Shabbos Hayom Lashem. Ichlu ayo, which is by the way, the Gemara derives three suitors from the Ichlu three four. Ichlu ayo means you have to eat on Shabbos. And it's a mitzvah. If you fast on Shabbos, you have a violation of this mitzvah. 
However, that's the Rajma and apparently the Rambam. However, the more famous Shita, which is quoted by the Mishnah Bura, is that the Isa Tainus B'Shabbos is based on the Pasuk of Odek Shabbos of Yishayo and Novi B'Karos Shabbos. There's Rabbi Simcha. The Isa Tainus on Shabbos, which might be an Isa Torah, as, as we said, according to the Rashma and the Rambam, or it's a bitul of Honig Shabbos, according to other Rishonim. That's only what we call a Tainitz May Ace Liais, 24 hours of fasting. However, if the Tainitz is less than 24 hours, that means if he starts, he commences the, the fast on the morning of the Tainitz, morning of Shabbos, and he fasts from Shachris until Shia Sachama, he doesn't violate the Isa Torah, and probably not even the Isa of, of Onik Shabbos. Says Rabbi Simcha, I'll prove it. First of all, we fast the Tainus Chalo on Shabbos. How can you fast the Tainus Chalo on Shabbos and violate an Isa Tainus no rice? But the answer is, he's only going to wake up in the morning. Oh no, I had a terrible dream, and he's going to fast from the morning until the evening. Not only that, the Gemara says that if, let's say, a person was fasting on a Friday, the Gemara vacillates back and forth in the Sechta Erevin as to whether or not he should continue fasting until after Shkia, which means that part of Shabbos he will fast. And the final conclusion is that he could be matched on this time. And the reason for that is because he's not going to violate the Easter. Tainus do raisa by dipping into Shabbos with the Tainus. Okay, fine. Says Rabbi Simcha, in the case of the Tainus of Asar Bateves, it's not the Ace Lies. We only begin the Tainus in the morning until the evening. There would be no Isa Tainus here, at least not at the Raisa level, for sure not, because he's not fasting the Ace Lies. The Avadram, therefore, understood that the Etzem Ayom Azeb in Asar Bateves is teaching us. That with regard to uh, Tainus, if Asar Batavis would to fall on Chavez, then we would be fasting the Etzem Ayom Azeh, and it would not be a violation of the Isa Tainus because it only begins in the morning. Okay, there's a lot more here to the Rameer Simcha, but because of time considerations, I want to move on to page 97. So again, I owe you, you know, the last half of page 96, which is a further analysis of the Rameer Simcha, the Arsenech's Raya to support the Abu Jaha. What would be Again, now we're shifting our mode of thinking a little bit towards the Hashkafa. What would be on a Hashkafic level the justification to put Asara Betebes on the top of the pyramid? If the Avadrava is right and Rabbi Simcha substantiates his logic, and Vietzim Ayom Azim means that in a conflict between Asara Betebes as the Tainas and Shabbos, we put our Sarah on the level of like Yom HaKippur and Yetzirah Yom HaSeh. Why so? Or a philosophical question. And the one who addresses this question is Rabbi Yonis and Ibishis in his famous work, the Yaros Tvash. And again, I just want to express my thanks to Rabbi Mirsky because we owe him a tremendous debt of gratitude for just gathering together all these sources. Who would who would look in Rabbi Simcha? Who would look in Kedusha Chaim and in the the you know the Vilna the Vilna Avesdin Rabbi Shlomo Chaim and and certainly who would look in the Yaris Tvash? There's the Yaris Tvash. There's something called Tchilas Haperonios. Where do we find this concept of 
the Chumra of Tchilas Haperonius. Obviously, we find it in Tishabah. Although Rabbi Yochanan would have fasted on the 10th of Av, when the Mesa Migdash really burnt, but we commemorate Tishabah on the 9th of Av. Why? The Gemara says, because of Tchilas Haperonius. They lit the flame on the 9th of Av. Says the Aristvash, Asar Beteves is Yom Tchilas Aperonius. Because at that moment, on the 10th of Av, the enemy forces sieged Yerushalayim. Samach Melech Bavel HaMatzor Al Yerushalayim Betchilas Aperonius Tzorosa Gedola Kiflayim. It's a Tzorah Kfula. Because came in Shehutra HaRetzua Milamala Lotzer el ha'ir, once God already gave license to the enemies, to the Vuchanetzar, to siege the city. And they will be able to successfully implement their program. That's what happened. Now, again, you might ask the following question. When you look at the Pasuk in Zechariah that we began with today, Soma Asiri is actually mentioned last on the list. Logically, according to the Shita of Yonis and Ibish, it should have been listed at the beginning of the list. It's called Rosh Aperonius. Every other Peronis takes place afterwards, so to speak, and is implemented or generated by the original, the original Rosh HaPeronis, the Trias HaPeronis. In truth, the Gemara itself asks this question. And the Gemara says, in Mesetra Rosh Hashanah, Daf Yud Chesamit Beis, that the Pesach should have began with Soma HaSir. Ella, the Torah mentions the Moros the sequence is based on the months. We start the calendar year in Nisan, and then we go through each month subsequently. Israel Berevi, Vagomar Basir. But the truth is that the Tzom Asir, although mentioned last on the list, is the Trilas Haperonius and Kosha Mikol. And here we get to the insight of the Chassam Sof. On the bottom of page 97. According to Chazal, when Nebuchadnezzar Melchbavel was about to issue the final decree and implement the decision to destroy Yerushalayim, there was a whole deal, a whole discussion up in the Bezdin Chalmau. And what they were trying to decide in the Bezdin Chalmau is how far are we going to allow Nebuchadnezzar to go? What would be the Hemshek? Nebuchadnezzar is going to begin his attack to Yushalayim with the Matzar on a Sarvate base. And what does that mean? You've set into motion a process that will reach its fruition if it's not stopped on Tisha B'av with the destruction of the base of Mikdash. There were the Maimanim and the Smolanim, right? The, the right side is the meat of Chesed and Rachamim, and the left is the meat of Dinivura. And there were Malachim that sat on the jury up in the heavenly courts to this direction and that direction. At the end of the day, those on the left side of Din and Gura, they won out. Says the Chsam Sofer. Once they went out, then the 10th of Tevez becomes an ominous day, not just in a historical context, but every single year, year in and year out. Sarabitavis is a very challenging, a very heavy day. 
because the Gemara tells us called Dor Shalom Nivne Beis Hamikdash Biyom of Malal of Akosav Kilu Echriva. The question of Hemshen, of whether this situation of Kurban Abayis will, in a sense, regenerate itself year in and year out. Will it be a Hemshen? That is a is a judgment up in Chamayim every single year on Asar B'Tevis. On Asar B'Tevis, once again, just like the original Asar B'Tevis, there were those Malachim on the right and those on the left, and there was a contention between the two camps. And at the end, we lost out to the small. We always lose out to the left, by the way. Uh, I don't know about Canada. I just know about my, uh, my country over there, America. Anyway, so what happens? Every year, we will be judged. Will there be finally a termination? And Asar B'Tavis will not lead to Chorban. And will, will, on the contrary, will be, as Zechariah predicts, the Yasasan and Simcha will rebuild the base of Mikdash. Or no, there'll be a Hemshev. And from Asar B'Tavis, we'll eventually end up with Dishabah and Chorban in every generation in which the base of Mikdash is not rebuilt. is like a generation of Chorban. Is therefore our fasting on Asar B'Teve, says the Tzam Sofer, is a fast levatel as Agzera Chal Asar B'Teve, levatel as Hemshech HaChurban. This is not a fast for the Tzara that took place 2,000 years ago. That might be true for Tishaba. But Soma Siri is unique because it's that Skala Saparonia says, because I'll say on that day there was a judgment up on high, and that's going to repeat itself throughout the spiral of Jewish history, year in and year out. Can we successfully be Mavatal Xera of Asar Beteves? And that's why this, you, this, the Etzimayom on this day when the Bezdin Shalmala is sitting in judgment, that's when we are given. The potential of being a vatal xerora. And says that some sort of so beautifully, a sarbateves, therefore, is like a tinus kalom. What's the purpose and the goal of a tinus kalom if not be a vatal xera? On that day, there was xera through the kalom. The kalom is clinching the xera. And now we have the possibility of being a vatal xera. And therefore, Titus Chalom is a very serious matter, very heavy, and it overrides the Shabbos. And so too, says the Tzam Sofer, justifying the conclusion of the Abu Draham that Asar B'Tavis will override the Shabbos. It's ordered to be Mavatil. Let's call it a Tzaras Chalom, the Tzara of this long dream of catastrophe and of destruction. Is Tzom Asar B'Teves is Levatel Gzeras Hemshech HaChurmon. And therefore, it's such a significant and important song to try to be Levatel Gzeras that it overrides the Shabbos. Now, Lathia needs to and what I'm about to say is very, you know, very iffy. You'll just, you'll decide. Even if we don't succeed, chas b'sholem, on this Asar B'Tevez next week, what day of the week is it? I think it's on Wednesday of next week. Am I right? Tuesday. On Tuesday of next week. Even if we don't succeed in being mavatal Xerah, Ask for Shalom if we don't succeed. We can be assured that we will successfully bring the day of Sasar Mesimcha, of Binyan Beis Amigdash, the restoration of the temple, closer. Maybe an inch closer, maybe hopefully a couple of meters closer, maybe kilometers closer. I don't know. But we're moving closer. And a tiny chalom is not a violation of Shabbos because oneg hulo. Why is it an oneg? Oneg is you give me a you give me a good sholent. You know that's an oneg. But I mean, now you tell me to fast. Where, where's the oneg here? 
The answer is because I feel in my intuition, in my neshama, that I am being a vatal exer of this halom. And for me, fasting is an oneg. So too, fasting on Asar B'tevis, even on Shabbos, according to the Avadrav's Chiddush, is an oneg. Because I'm moving that much closer towards the binyan based on me. And in conclusion, because I, we're running out of time here on page 98, the Amenu, Tzirfu Lassar B'teves, Es Yom HaKadosh HaKloli, L'Zecher Kedosh HaShoa, Hashem Yikom Dom. So there's a day of Kadosh HaKloli, we don't know in most cases, I don't know, most cases, I don't know what the statistics are, but it, Probably in most cases, we don't know, you know, when is the yard site of those who were murdered. So we have Yom Kaddish Klob for the show, for the Kedosh show. Why on Asar Betavis? I mean, one could argue that it should have been a special fast day commemorating the Kedosh HaShoah or maybe Tisha B'av. And he quotes the Shmuel here in the name of the Briskarov. And as I always say, you know, when we come to Shmuel in the Briskars, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt. But he says, and I heard it from my Rav, not in the name of his uncle, but in his own name, that we cannot add a special fast to the days of fasting that Chazal designated. And there's a kino that we recite on Tishba Mi'ite in the Roshi Mayim in which we said in, in the Python, one of the Idole Maliatosa says Ein lahotzif moed shever v'taver We're not allowed to add another day. Fine, we can't add another day. So we have to integrate the fast for the Kedosh Shoah into one of the existing days. We can't set up a separate fast day in Lahosif, Shever, etc. Moed Shever. By the way, the Chazanish also agreed, one of the cases in which there is actually an agreement, a unanimous agreement between the Britzka Rav and the Chazanish, not to set up a separate fast day for the Shoah. But why a sarbatavis? No, Ras Hashoah Hichnisu Belibos Rabin Machsheves Yevich Shehine Chasvisholom Ovad Sabram Shal Yisrael Butla Takanosom Chasvisholom. Yom Hashoah is a day. Any memory of the Shoah is a day in which we feel a sense of, of Yehush. By the way, we recently found out in our family, it's amazing, that my father's first cousins, at least our generation was unaware of this. My father's first cousins were murdered one after the other, shot to death by the Nazis. One of them somehow, the youngest of them all, ran away with a bullet in his body, a young boy. He's still alive today in Chulon. He has the same first name as my father, Shamberle. 
And he tells the story about how he survived and his whole family was wiped out. And the Gedoli Yisrael are trying to be Menachem Yisrael. And the Python says, That sometimes in the Maka itself, we have to find the solution. Now, I realize that we, we need much more time to finish this up. It actually, I think you have, David, correct me if I'm right, up to page 102. We reached page 99. So we have 99, 100, 101, and 102. And I would just like to suggest the following. I don't think we'll have time to learn this together before I serve with Tavis, but if you get a chance to go through it, what is it about a with Tavis that on the one end it's Hascholas Haparanios, which makes it more chamu. It even overrides the shops. And yet, it's a fast day that has within it the latent seeds of Nechama, of Oneg Hulo. And therefore, Dafka Sar Betebes is going to be the choice day for the Kaddish HaKloli, for the Kedosh HaShoah, because it represents that cantillation that within the Peronios, we find some sort of a Nechama and if it's Hashem, we pray that the Nevu of Zechariah Novi will come to fruition and these days will be Lesasson Lusimcha. Can you read so? Thank you, Amen. So. Amen. Do, do we actually observe the Asar Batavis that way? I, I'm, I'm not aware that, that Asar Batavis is, is viewed as the. I think it became I, I, more popular here in Eretz Israel. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it got picked up all over the world. I, I can't. Here, here, here we, we do it more on Tisha B'o. We have the kina for the Kedoshim. The Bob the Rebbe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just I, I wasn't aware of this, this uh, Asar Batebe's connection with the Shoah. Right. But keep in mind, there's a difference between a kina and Kaddish. Right. Kina is part of Avelis, and that's appropriate for Tisha B'o. But Kaddish means we, we don't know where the yard site is. So how do we recite Kaddish? And it's it's a it's a, it's it's a Klal Yisrael thing. It's not, you know, you know, my my uncle was killed and my my parents and so forth and so on. It, that's not what it's all about. It's all about Klal. So so many Kedoshim that we don't know when to serve their yard site. And a Kaddish could be uplifting for the Neshama of the yard site. So the fact that we add a kinna for Kedoshe Shoah, like a Baba Rebbe's kinna, and there may be one or two others that, that pass the, the test on Tisha B'Av, that doesn't in any way preclude a Kaddish for all the Kedoshe Shoah whose yard type is unknown. <laughs> and that Kaddish is meant to uplift those souls and give us the Choma that <laughs> there'll be Tchia Samesim, and there'll be a gu'ula and a rebuilding of the base on Mikdash. And those days will be with Sosimus. And primarily, we're focused on, in a sense, the most chamur from the Avadrav's position of all the tiniest on Kurban, and that's Asar Batavis. And Dafka, in the most chamur, we find the seeds of the chama, of Oneg, as the Sam Sofer calls it. And that's why we fast on Shabbos according to the Avadrav. Asar Betavis now becomes a wonderful conduit to add Nechama within the Tzor itself. Uh -huh. right. Okay. Shkayach.